As many of you guys know, I recently reached 150,000 subscribers, so I'm giving away $150 worth of Steam gift card codes. You can enter in using the link in the description down below. Hey guys, me like big boom here and welcome to unturned 3.15.4.0 What I would like to consider the firearms update this week's update completely revamps how firearms work in the game Say goodbye to hit scan and say hello to bullet drop and travel time using firearms snipers Especially is now going to require a lot more skill and mastery alongside these new changes to the firearms We can now use the new triangle floor and roofs to create hexagonal bases and the zombies over at dead zones are feeling a little sick but without further ado allow me to welcome you to my new humble abode complete with triangular floors and roofs to show you some of the cool changes in this week's update to start scope sway bullet drop and bullet travel time have all been added i absolutely love this adding a challenge to the game that requires skill and mastery rather than just being simply annoying now whenever you are sniping you are going to have to deal with scope sway. I'm not currently moving the mouse. That can be improved when lying prone or putting on new attachments. And also by holding shift, which takes oxygen, as you can see in the bottom left. Scope sway we see in all sorts of different first person shooters. This is going to be very useful just for sniping in general. You're going to have to be constantly combating this scope sway. And it's still not terribly difficult to keep your sights on somebody's head, even with this scope sway enabled. It's just going to require a lot more effort on your end. But but remember, bullet time and bullet drop has been added. Say goodbye to hit scan because this will not hit that zombie in the head. It actually dropped down just a little bit. And oh, he's going inside. He's had enough of this. But yes, the bullets do drop. They still travel super, super fast. So fast that using an assault rifle from close range uh, will be unnoticeable to you. You'll still be able to fire at these zombies in the same way that you have, that you would normally be able to. Uh, so zombies, you know, killing them is still normal, but when it comes to shooting things at long range, you can see these bullets that are dropping. You, it's still very difficult to notice from this angle, but these bullets are dropping to at least somewhat of a degree, and you are going to have to keep that in mind when shooting things from far away. So if I wanted to shoot somebody across this lake here, I am going to have to compensate for that bullet drop just by a little bit. If you're if you're spraying somebody from far away, you'd really just end up hip fire spraying them and hoping that something hits uh, in the same way that you really do just lay down suppressive fire in games that do have bullet drop like this. Now when it comes to sniper rifles and being pinpoint accurate, shooting things from long range, this might actually be too far away. Uh, so I'm not going to take a shot at these guys, but uh, you are going to need to take into account the bullet drop, uh, the bullet travel time. If these were players and they were sprinting across, you'd need to lead them. Uh, this is all expected from things where you are actually going to be sniping from a reasonable range, like the zombie that is in that base right there. I would crouch, I'd compensate for the bullet drop and I'd fire and we have a headshot right there. Before this update that would have smacked the wall right above his head because of the hit scan but now we do have bullet drop and it's amazing. It's snipers are going to need to put a whole lot more effort into their shots. They are going to need to be thinking about all the shots they're making unlike what I'm doing here. Jesus. But as you can see you're going to need to be a lot more skillful to use sniper rifles and also uh, this is making bows, crossbows, compound bows, regular wooden bows. Uh, they are going to require more skill in that regard as well. Crossbows are pretty good because they are they do shoot those arrows very, very quickly. But when it comes to wooden bows or compound bows, you are going to need to aim up a lot more than you normally would uh, with firearms. Side note regarding the specifics of bullet drop, dedicated snipers like the Grizzlies, Timberwolves, Matamorazes, stuff like that, they do have slightly longer range and faster muzzle velocity than other weapons like assault rifles, and also putting a suppressor on a weapon will decrease that muzzle velocity causing more bullet drop, and weapons with internal suppressors like a Matamoraz or a Honey Badger experience even more bullet drop as a result of that suppressor in there. But still, it's not that much. Really, you're going to be using a Honey Badger at close range, so that bullet drop does not really matter at all. Back at home, you guys may have already noticed it, but a lot of my home is making use of the new triangular floors and roofs, allowing me to create hexagonal portions of my base and allowing me to have a lot more freedom when it comes to how I want my base 
to look. And also, when I was creating my garage here, I suddenly realized how useful having a triangular backing to the garage is. I'm able to back my car into my garage and have enough room for two doors back here with my little generator here as well as leading into my base um, and also giving me a little bit of extra room uh, both in front and back behind as a result of having this triangular floor back here. This is just one example of the kind of benefits that having triangular floors and roofs gives you. Uh, you also have options of creating watchtowers that allow you to see in every single direction with the windows. There are just lots and lots of awesome options that you have as a result of these new triangular floors and roofs. The crafting recipes of these new structures will be on the screen right now. I love it. Now heading out front, I've created for myself a little bit of a shooting range using the makeshift buildables. And I'm sure if many of you guys have played on PvP servers and built a base of your own, you know that these are actually quite easy to make. Any person can punch a tree down, create some little plates like this and put them leading up to your roof or maybe blocking your front entrance or whatever. You see these plates all over the place on PvP because they're really easy to make and you can only destroy them with explosives. So if somebody built a little uh, staircase up to your roof, the only way that you can destroy it is by putting a breaching charge on it and possibly destroying your actual base in the process of doing so. But now uh, we can destroy these with any sort of material. If you come across these, you can easily get rid of these. It's just as simple as that. In fact, the only reason why you really use these uh, makeshift plates is to maybe board up vehicles or maybe block out windows or, or something. You don't actually make your base out of these makeshift buildables. That's not really what they're intended for. So it makes sense for these objects to be able to be destroyed by anything. Now back over to the zombies that are feeling sick. These are the new dead zone zombies. Zombies that spawn within a dead zone area um, are now going to be all green and glowy. And when you shoot them, they explode into a radioactive mess. This has all been added to make in the long run objects that spawn inside of dead zones, very high tier items like shadow stalkers, grizzlies, all sorts of very good weapons that spawn inside of dead zones, very difficult to get to as a result of these these high-end zombies. Now because of these radioactive messes or whatever, when I when I uh, got this guy with a military knife, he exploded and actually did some damage to me. And if I did not have my vitality skill up, I would be very, very screwed. It would destroy my vitality. And look at the blood here. It glows green. This guy has not been doing so well. Uh, they've been spending quite some time in this dead zone area, and it is not safe to be in here. So when you want to kill zombies that are in the dead zone area, you need to use ranged weapon. Look at them explode in that green mess, but uh, you are going to need to use ranged weapons on top of having biohazard suits, which is pretty important because right now I'm in this dead zone and my sickness is going down. So that's that's something to really consider here. I'm, I've got a shadow stalker and I don't think I'll be able to get out by the time I, yeah, so I'm already all out of sickness and I'm gonna start dying now. I think it's pretty cool. I mean, right now there isn't much of any reason for you to head into that UFO crash because you can really only find shadow stalkers, so it doesn't make it all that much worth it. But Nelson said that the intention is that any future official maps will have high quality rare loot in heavily protected dead zones. So using these new zombies in dead zones in that way uh, makes a lot more sense. On top of these changes and additions, there were also nine new curated workshop items that were added to the unturned stockpile, all very awesome. You'll also notice that there was the blueberry shirt added, the shirt of 2R Games, so if you guys like to go out and support them, the link to their new shirt will be in the description down below. Now there were still a few minor improvements and tweaks and fixes that were not covered in this video, but if you guys would like to check those out, as always, I will put the full update post in the description down below. Lots of awesome things in this week's update. You guys should vote all your opinions on the poll cards to the side as well as in the comment section down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to rate, comment, subscribe, and do all that gibberish because you're like big boy. Is out. <laughs>